All right, so I just wasted like a good half hour with a round file filing out the center of this uh, cassette adapter here to take off my cassette. Finally got it big enough to go around my axle, and it's not the right socket. <laughs> so I got order wrong. So my next method is to open this motor up. So I'm taking off the side case bolts here, and I'm going to see if I can pull the whole side case off. All right, I got it opened up. Not bad. Look what I just found. I was wondering when this motor uh, runs on 72 volts and gets a little hot, it, uh, it was shutting down. I thought I had a bad uh, hall sensor, but look at this. Tiny little piece of copper stuck on my hall sensor. Look at that. Gets me worried, makes me think it's part of my uh, windings here. So now I'm going to be looking around. See if I can find a little broken piece of my winding here. But everything else seems to work, so the motor operates. But that was a good little find. Almost put it back together. Alright, so after taking apart my old 48 volt golden motor, uh, as you know, I had a couple of problems. I was running it on 72 volts for a while, and I think it started to get a little hot, and I may have screwed up one of my hall sensors. So I opened it up, I checked them out, tested the voltage of them. Everything seems to work fine. Uh, I got the motor completely back together. I took off my freewheel, I took off my disc brake adapter, because, as you know, I might be trying to mid-mount this somewhere. I got the motor completely back together. As you know, I found that little piece of copper. I don't know where it came from, but it was kind of stuck to one of my hall sensors. So I'm hoping that that was the issue. All right, sorry about that, the phone rang. But uh, I got 36 volts here, two five cells in series. Got my battery powered up and ready to go. Got my trusty old thumb throttle here. As you can see, all the stuff I took off of the motor. Here's my new sprocket, or freewheel, whatever you want to call it. And I clean this thing up put the thing back together, although I'm going to have to take the side covers back off when I cut these axles down and rewire it. But uh, just to give you an idea, it's still nice and quiet, working fine. Full speed on 36 volts is still pretty slow. Well, time to take it apart and uh, try to mid-mount this thing, cut the axle down. Alright, taking the trusty axe out of this thing. As you can see, I made my first cut. Uh, I'm going to try to cut this axle without taking the wires out. I know it's not the best idea, but uh, I really don't want to open this thing back up and re these wires when I know I'm not going to be over-volting this thing too crazy. So I'm going to try to carefully cut this out and remove this side of the axle and then I can also cut over here. Alright, so I have to say that was quite a success. Uh, I pulled the side cover off, took off the old uh, 5 or however many speeds that was, yeah 5 speed freewheel, put on a single speed, uh, cut my axles down, getting ready to mid mount this thing and I also had to wrench off the old disc brake adapter which was kind of rusted on there. And uh, this side I had to cut down carefully. As you can see, I cut around it in four spots and then uh, got the four corners of those four spots. And then I kind of lightly tapped it with a mallet till it cracked and pulled it apart. I still have to clean up the uh, opening there with the Dremel tool when I get back home, but I don't have it with me right now. But all in all, I think this is going to work out. 